All right, first thing we're going to do is set up the rain sensor and the thermo hydro sensor together because this goes on top of this, um, which attaches to the solar transmitter. So let's take our thermo hydro sensor and we've got our three bolts, screws, and face the little engraved arrow towards yourself. Take the rain gauge and long ways. Place it onto the three double-ended bolts that are coming out of the thermal hydro sensor. Onto the three points on the rain gauge. So line that up and let that sit on there. And then put each screw in place. Now it comes with a screwdriver to help us set up. So just screw them in. Okay, so now that that's attached, we can put the rain collector onto the rain gauge by lining up each of the little wings coming off the side with the holes and then rotating clockwise until it clicks into place. But before you do that actually, cut the cable tie that lets the tipper self-empty. So when the water comes in it is self-emptying out the sides. Okay. Now place the debris filter into the rain collector, just like that. There's no locking in, it just sort of sits in there, so it makes it really easy for you to clean out. Okay, now we're going to set up the wind sensor, so let's get the Thermo Hygro rain gauge out of the way. And let's take a look at this anemometer. So this is the wind unit. What we want to do is take the wind cups and a screwdriver and one of the tiny screws that come in the box. In the book it says to loosen the screws that are already in there but they don't actually come already in there, they're in the box. You gotta put them in yourself. So, let's put that in there. And before we tighten it, we attach it to the top of the wind unit. Okay, and then we tighten it on. So have to tighten it quite a lot. There we go. And just make sure it's good. All right, that's good. Next, the same thing, but with the wind vane on the bottom. So we attach it on, take one of the tiny screws, pop it in there. Cool. So the wind cups are used for measuring the wind speed and the wind vane is how it determines the wind direction. Okay, now that we've set up the wind meter, we are going to attach the solar transmitter to the rain gauge. So the way we do that is the mounting ring on the back of the transmitter here goes up just again underneath this mounting area just here. You hold it in place while you take the mounting bracket and lock that in behind it. Next we're going to attach the cables for the sensor to the solar transmitter. So let's unscrew this. Okay, 
You know, there's a little rubber stopper that we can remove to thread the cables through the back of the unit. And each cable will have the name of the sensor written on it. So let's take a look at the one I've got here. This is the T and H sensor, Thermo and Hygro. And then as you can see, each of these ports here has a similar label. So the T and H one is second from the end, just in there. This, and then of course the last sensor, the wind meter. Let's just leave it wound up for now, but. And the wind one is the fourth one along. Okay, now that all of the cables have been inserted, we can put the rubber stopper back in its place. So we move the cables off to the sides to make space and then just place it back in. So the way these solar transmitters work is they are powered by the sun when the sun is out and then they recharge the rechargeable battery so that when the sun is gone it can run off this. You want the positive polarity to be upwards and if you've inserted it correctly you'll see the lights down here start flashing. During shipping the rechargeable battery may have lost some charge. So don't expect it to work until up to seven hours of full sunlight charging. So we can close this back up now and retighten the screws. So there are three ways of attaching our sensors uh, outlined in the instructions, but today we're just going to attach them all to a pole. Uh, as an example, I've got my light stand here um, and I've taken all the hex nuts and washers off the U-bolts and we'll use these to attach the sensors to our pole. So let's just start by bringing it over here. First thing you want to do is take one of your U-bolts and place it in the gap just above where the holes are and then move that onto your pole. Remove the rain collector by rotating anti-clockwise and carefully lifting off so that we can place the other U-bolt through the holes. You then want to take your mounting plate and attach that over this U-bolt. And then I put the washers and the hex nut back onto the U-bolt. Okay. Next we can take our wind meter and thread this U-bolt through the holes. reattach the washers and hex nuts. While I've done it by hand, I would recommend you do this with a wrench to get it nice and tight and secure. So you can attach your wind meter wherever you want to. We've just done it onto the same pole as an example. Um, you've got this six meter cable, so it can be anywhere up to six meters away, as long as it's still connected to the transmitter box. There is a small spirit level inside the rain gauge. Make sure that wherever you've set it up, it's level um, for an accurate rainfall reading. 
Um, you're also provided with some cable ties to help you keep things neat and tidy. So now that we've set the sensors up, we can begin by syncing them to the main unit. The main unit can be powered by either the C-sized batteries that it comes with or the power adapter. Today let's just use the power adapter. But if we turn it over here, you can see this is where the C batteries would go into. There's also two very small switches inside here. One of them is for whether or not you would like the backlight of the screen to be on continuously or to just turn on when you touch something. It's currently set to on, which seems to be how it comes out of the box, which means that if you leave it as it is, the backlight of the screen will always be on, which is probably the better thing. Um, however, if you are using the batteries to power it, that will use the batteries up very quickly. So I'd recommend using the mains adapter and having the backlight switch set to on. The other switch we've got here is whether or not your atomic clock would be syncing to the European or the UK atomic, atomic clock. Um, being in Australia, that won't matter for us. We'll have to set the clock manually. We can't use the atomic clock. There's also a very tiny reset button for any issues you might be having. One of the first things you'd want to do is just try hitting the reset button and resyncing your sensors and resetting the clock. This is where the mains adapter plugs into. This is also where the USB will plug into if you'd like to download the information from the main unit into your computer. Alright, now that the unit has turned on, we can see that the indoor temperature in the top left is 26.2 degrees and the humidity is 63%. Those readings are coming from sensors inside the main unit. Uh, and as you can see in the outdoor section, we have not got any readings from the sensor that we've just set up uh, because we haven't synced the two just yet. So we'll do that now, beginning by clicking on today and then holding down set and unit at the same time. We want it set to channel one because by default our transmitter is set to broadcast on channel one. So with it set to channel one, we can hit set and then tap anywhere else and see that it is now searching channel 1 for outdoor sensors. And that's it, all set.